When we want to provide feedback to the user, we could use literals in our program. But I'm sure you know by now we don't want to be doing this. We need to avoid using literals where we can so that we don't have to recompile our program every time they change. And plus, we also want to allow the facility for our messages to be translated into other languages. So how do we use messages? Well, the first thing we need to do, we need to store our messages in what we call a message class, which in turn gets stored in a database table called T100. Let's have a look at T100. I'll open up a new session, go to SE11, T100, choose display, and now we can see this table called messages, and it only contains four fields. Let's have a look at the content so it's easier to understand. And here we go. You can see we have a language key. D represents the German language. We have an application area, then we have a message code, and then the actual text. So let's go to the message screen right now. Now we can, if we have messages already existing, use the go to and the messages option. But to create new messages, you can either use forward navigation or go directly to transaction SE91. Now, the messages we create get stored within message classes. So when we create messages, we need to create a message class. And when creating a message class, you need to take into account the customer namespace rules. So this means for us, start with the letter Z. And for this example, I'm just gonna do ZMES1. And I will leave the messages radio button selected and I'll choose create. Now it's important to realize and keep in mind that messages are different from text elements in that they are not objects that are part of your program. Messages are stored within the table we just looked at, table T100. And because of this, we can reuse messages across any number of programs. Now back to this screen, when you first create a message class, you have to fill in the attributes. And I'll just give it some short text. And then we save it and it lasts for a transport. And once it's saved, we can then click on the messages tab and key in the messages. So let's create a message. And if you remember back to our program, let's see if we can jump back to it. We have a selection screen where we're looking for an employee number. We have some radio buttons. Then we have a selection option for date of birth. Well, some time back, we created this at selection screen event. So let's bring this back in And this is where we can check to make sure the employee number is not greater than the last employee number in our table. So in that case, we need to bring back in our initialization section. So remember, this is going to be run as soon as the program is run, and it will store the last employee number in this variable WA employee. Then when the selection screen is shown, we can do this check. If the value the user entered is greater than the employee number we have stored in WA employee, we can display a message. So what message should we display? Well, let's go here and we can key in a message that's going to tell the user that the employee number they entered onto the screen is too high in value 
and they need to choose a lower one. So we can just type employee number is too high and click save. So let's go back to our program and take a look how we can use this message within our code. So we just need to locate the line where we need to put the message, which is right here, and key in the relevant ABAP. Now before we do, I want to tell you about the different message types that we can use in the program. Now I have a graphic here that comes from the SAP websites that list the message types. And you can see we have A, E, I, S, W, X. So A, a termination message. You can just read the text here. And it just tells you a message box is thrown up and then the program terminates. Next one is E, error message. And this is the one we're going to use in our example. Because we want to tell the user this is an error. But depending on where we use this, it can have a different effect within our program. We're going to use it in the selection screen event. So what's going to happen is processing of that event will stop, the message will be shown on the screen, and the user will be able to amend their entry. When they press execute or press enter, the at selection screen event will fire again. And then the if statement will test the condition to see if the user entered the correct values. If it's incorrect again, another error message will be shown on the screen. If everything's OK, then processing will continue. Now, if we used an error message outside of an event like the at selection screen, let's just say it was in the body of the program. Well, this would cause our program to close. So you've got to be aware of where you're using this type of message. Then you can read the rest here. We have information, status, warning, and then exit again. So let's get back to our example. And we'll put in the code for displaying the message. Now it's really easy. If we refer back to our message class, let's make it a bit smaller. And we'll pop it over here. Our message class is ZMES1. Now a message is three zeros. So down here in the code, we would write message, then the message type, and in this case it's going to be an error represented by the E, and then the message number, which is three zeros. And then open bracket, and we put the message class, ZMES1. Close bracket, full stop. And that's it. That's all there is to display messages. So let's check our code, make sure everything's correct. <laughs> and of course, it's not, so we'll just make that into a comment like it should be. Okay, everything is good. We'll activate the program and now we'll test it out. Now what I'll do, I'll put a breakpoint here so we can see the code in action and I'll press F8 to start. So just as a note, first of all we'll have the initialization section. That'll execute and load up the last employee number. Okay, now we do have a default value which is greater than our highest number in the table, but because the user hasn't triggered any action yet, our error message hasn't kicked in, which means the at selection screen event hasn't fired. So let's just key in 55555 and I'll press enter, and just by pressing enter. That's caused this event to trigger at selection screen. And don't forget we're basing it on the employee field. And now we're going to check our condition. 
So I'll double click my EE. There's the fives that we've entered. Our highest number in our work area employee, as you can see, is one, lots of zeros and six. So this should trigger our message. I will press F8. And there, and there you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have an error message, employee number is too high. And that just represents what we keyed in for the message text. So that's it, that's how you can use messages within your program to prompt the user to do something or tell them why a program has terminated or just for information purposes. So one thing, because it's an error message here, oops, sorry, I pressed enter again. Okay, it's forcing us to enter a good employee number. So I'm just gonna do one and this one, and now it should be good. I'll press enter again. It's doing this event. I'll press F5 to step through. And that's it, it's just gone through the program. The error message wasn't triggered. So the error message has now disappeared from the screen. Let's step back out. And we'll get rid of this breakpoint. Now, before moving on, let's talk about the addition that we can include with our messages. And the addition for messages that we're gonna discuss uses the word with and then we can specify a field. Now this with addition is very handy. It allows us to include up to four different operands or parameters that we can pass into our message. So for example, here we're displaying an error message based on the employee number field. Well, we can actually include the value that the user entered onto the screen to display inside our message. And the way we do this is by, first of all, making sure we have an error message that can accept parameters. So let's bring this across and let's create a duplicate of this. Let's use error message 01. And what we need to do is edit this message with the ampersand character. So I'm going to say the employee number and then we'll put the ampersand here is too high. So in effect, that will insert the employee number the user entered onto the screen. And we captured in our my EE variable. So let's save this message, move it out of the way, come back to our code. And now with this with addition, all I need to do is send my EE into the message. So it's going to display the message saying with my EE variable. Let's do a code check. Execute. I won't do a breakpoint this time. We'll just execute the program. Let's key in our fives and I'll press enter. And it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Oh, I know, sorry, my mistake. We're using the wrong message number. So we created a new message number 001. So we need to specify that in our program. I will activate it again. Fingers crossed it's gonna work this time. Press enter. And there we can see employee number fives is too high. And that matches exactly with the message we set up. Now this with addition to the messages statement allows you to send up to four different parameters into your message. And you'll find this type of error reporting throughout lots and lots of programs in SAP. And you'll find that there are hundreds if not thousands of different messages set up all throughout the system. And remember, because messages can be used across all programs, it makes sense to see if there are some messages already set up by colleagues 
that you can reuse. There will be standard message classes set up for HR, finance and different other modules of SAP systems that you can probably go into, have a look and reuse those message classes and the individual messages inside. That wraps up messages. Let's move on.